All right, we're back with another in the series of the Northwest Fest 2021 Filmmaker Interview Series. Uh, very, very excited to welcome this next filmmaker um, who is uh, part of our Global Visions film series uh, with an absolutely tremendous, tremendous film. One of my absolute favorites of our entire lineup this year. Um, so joining me today all the way from Sydney, Australia is Anthony Ash Brennan and representing his film, We Are Conjola. Anthony, and Thanks I should for, ask you first. Thanks for zooming in, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you prefer Anthony or Ash? Um, only my mother calls me Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Well, Ash, um, before we get started, um, for anyone who's, who's maybe just, you know, uh, perusing the lineup, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your film? Well, um, uh, it was World News uh, 18 months ago, the Australian Black Summer of Bushfire. Um, my village of um, Conjola Park in Lake Conjola, which is about three hours south of Sydney, uh, on New Year's Eve um, was one of the most um, savagely impacted areas. Um, in my little haven of Conjola Park, we lost 89 homes, and uh, one of those houses was mine. Um, I wasn't there at the time. Uh, my, my brother was, he lived down the road and um, he, fought, he fought the flames to the front door and uh, very fortunately he and his wife survived and his house survived, but everything around him is gone. Uh, everything in my street is gone. Um, we lost 75% of bushland and most heartbreaking of, of all, we lost a, a lot of wildlife. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of weeks after the fire, I was um, at my brother's house now because my, my brother's house survived. It, it sort of acted as like a, a meeting place for the Conjola Park refugees. You know, everybody was just you know, hanging out there. And um, one of my neighbours, Adam, now Adam lost his, um, his house plus his entire life's work of art oh. in the fire, all of his tools. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, Ash, I just need to start creating again so I can begin to heal. Mm -hmm. A little light bulb went off on my head there. And as a filmmaker, I I wanted to make a film, but I just didn't want to make a normal bushfire documentary, you know, another disaster documentary that gets lost in the ether. Um, And at the same time, I noticed that a lot of artists in the area had had the same feelings. Um, Stefan, my other neighbour who also lost his house, um, was writing beautiful poems on the... um, on the Conjola Facebook page, inspiring people to write poetry, to deal with their trauma. Um, another lady, uh, Penny, who also lost her house, she's a famous artist in, in the area. She was doing these beautiful bushfire paintings and people, the community saw the artists in the area were turning to their art to deal with their trauma. Um, and that inspired the community to also turn to art to deal with their trauma. So, um, I was started to make a, a film about that process of how to deal with your trauma, trauma through art. Mm-hmm. Once I started doing that, um, the community came to me and said, Ash, you're going to tell our bushfire story. <laughs> uh, wow. Incredible weight of, of expectation was put on me, obviously. Um, but I wanted to tell it right. I didn't want to, you know, I, I, I'm a filmmaker who do, does things the wrong way, right? Filmmakers, they have an idea. They do a synopsis, they go and apply for grants and, <laughs> you know, they get money and then they make their films, you know, they possibly line up a broadcaster or, you know, I don't do that. I just go, well, right, let's make a film. <laughs> and in this case, I had a sh- very small window of opportunity to make it. Basically, uh, the, the community didn't want to talk about it anymore, right? And so I had very small window of opportunity for them to still talk about it. And as well, I wanted to shoot whilst the um, landscape was still blackened. Right, yeah, for sure. I understand, right? Um, there is a lot of regrowth now, and um, but I, I sort of had that small uh, window. So I just, when I shot the film, I, I only had one thing in mind, tell the story that the community wants told. Don't tell, the sto- don't tell a story that will appeal to a TV network's um, viewing audience, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever happens, happens. Um, fortunately, in this case, there's been a lot of interest in it. Um, it's um, 
like your film festival. It's, it's, it's had a lot of interest in some film festivals around the world, which is, which is great. But um, more importantly, um, the people who have seen it in the community have said that it's given them closure. Oh, wow. Because everyone was dealing with their own battles. They never saw the big picture. And the film shows the big picture of what happened. Um, and everybody's like, no wonder we were traumatized. So no you know, people come to me saying, I'm not drinking anymore to get to sleep. I'm not taking sleeping pills to get to sleep. You know, and that's, that's a very unexpected but uh, wonderful result. Has it given you any sense of closure? Yeah, well, obviously I, I wasn't there, you know, and, you know, it's been said to me many times that, um, you know, it's me processing the trauma. Um, it was, to say it was a hard production for me personally is an understatement. Um, listening to um, everybody's, st- like some harrowing stories, some harrowing stories, a lot of, a lot of um, w- women's stories of survival too. Um, but just right, right through that, it's underpinned by these beautiful um, stories of art and um, resilience, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it, it is me. It, it was a process for me to, um, you know, deal with my own trauma. Yeah. You, you mentioned, you know, a few people from, from the community, you know, kind of started coming to you saying you're going to be telling our story. On the other hand, almost paradoxically, they don't want to talk about it anymore. They, they want to, you know, move yeah, on. Yeah. Um, did you find that when you started making it and throughout the process, was, was pretty much everyone in the community um, pretty much on board with it and wanting to be a part of it? Or did you have people who were just, leave me out of this? Um, for the most part, the community was behind it and willing to tell their story. There were a few people, including my brother, who didn't want to be in it. He didn't want to tell his story. And that's fair enough. And I never mm-hmm. pressured anybody who didn't want to be in it. But all those people who were like, you know what, I don't want to talk about it still gave me their blessing. Right. Okay. Um, you know, for the, I, I'm, it was 18 months ago now. For those of us, this is kind of a two-part question. We'll do it kind of one at a time. But for, for people, particularly in this part of the world, um, you know, we hear obviously a lot about the California wildfires, which has become an annual, well, really a semi-annual yeah. thing now. But in, over in your part of the world, this has become a huge issue. Why the rise and what, if anything, can be done about it or is being done about it? That's a loaded question, a loaded question isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, I'll give it a crack. Well, I'll say it. My belief is it's climate change. Um, we had... Um, wildfires or bushfires as we call them burning from august which is our winter right yeah this fire started in august right um 60, year old uh, old growth forests like rainforests burnt gone um and we were we were at the, at the end of a of a two year long drought so everything was dry um i I believe it is climate change um, and because in California and in Australia, the bushfire seasons are o- overlapping now. Mm-hmm. Now you, you see the aerial bombers in, in California, aerial water bombers in Car- California. Well, we lease them from California. We don't own our own, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, we lease them from California, but we can't lease them until their bushfire season's over. So we didn't get their water bombers until December. Wow. Which means their their seasons, you know, the, the seasons are interlapping now, overlapping. So, you know, to me, I, I believe that's climate change, man made climate change. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Australia, absolutely nothing's been done about it. Um, we we have a right wing government that um, is funded by you know uh, fossil fuel manufacturers and, and you know uh, miners, so yeah. mining companies. So that'll never change until this. Um, until this government's voted out and we're hoping the next election <laughs> that, that will happen. <laughs> but, you know, just like you have in, well, in America, there's, you know, Democrats and Republicans, you know, in Australia, we have liberal and labor. So there's no, it's, it's two party preferred system. So the next guys that come in, you know, they'll get the same donations and, you know, we wait to see what they're going to do. But 
Um, yeah, our Prime Minister at the moment uh, spoke with Joe Biden uh, through the week in the, the big summit, um, saying that we're going to be um, fossil fuel, fuel free by 2050. But it's an empty promise because what they're, what they're doing is actually anti that at the moment. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just wait to see what happens. In, in Australia, it's not good news. I think the other problem too, we've seen it, we've seen it time and time again, is what happens is, is, you know, certain politicians with big ideas like Biden that you just mentioned will come in with some great ideas. The problem is, is like four year terms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so unless, you know, either he or another Democrat win the next five elections. Mm -hmm. So you can actually have a generational, you know, 20 yeah. year, uh, yeah crack at this what happens is all the work i mean look at what happened with the last administration the previous yeah. administration the last guy <laughs> ugh, doing everything they could to destroy anything that obama had done right especially yeah. when it came to the epa and the environment so uh i agree it's a i agree with you 100 it's it's a massive worldwide problem right mm -hmm. now and we seem to be digging ourselves a deeper hole instead of getting out of it yeah <laughs> I don't understand yeah. human being. And I'm glad you mentioned the animals. I mean, we heard the statistics on the animals here. And I mean, it was the number, the sheer number of, of animals in the wildlife. And it's, it's mind boggling. Yeah. You know? um, there's the numbers as high as 3 billion, billion. animals killed or displaced. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, yeah. It's what do you say about that? You know, um, especially in Kanjola where I live. You know, it is what everybody thinks Australia is. There's kangaroos jumping down yeah. the street. You know, yeah. there's there's wombats running around. Yeah, um, that's that's what it is. You know, and you just don't see any. There's a few. There's a few kangaroo uh, mobs down at the caravan park because they were sort of protected there. But there's nothing in the bush. There's I think there's. Yeah, there's one wombat, one lonely wombat walking around, um, which was weird though. You know, obviously I'm no, I'm no um, wildlife expert, but um, different breeds of birds were hanging out together after the fire. Mm. You know, or rainbow lorikeets were hanging out um, with sparrows. Just you know, just and that that doesn't happen in in the wild, but because they lost so much bird life was lost. Like birds were dropping out of the sky. It was horrific. Wow. Um, just birds would just have, like my my sister in law has a chicken and a and like a rosella which is a colourful parrot um, hung out with the chicken for a while you know, <laughs> just kind of walked around with the chicken for a while because that's all they had you wow know? that's it nuts, you know? <laughs> it's beautiful but so sad yeah. at oh, the yeah. same time you know yeah. what you yeah. mentioned a little bit of your, there's a little bit of regeneration and regrowth starting to happen I mean what is the long term prognosis how long does it even take to uh, to start to see any well you you'll see in the in the film on the chunks of the trees there's you know there's greenery appearing mm -hmm. but for the most part there is no canopy mm -hmm. the canopy is what is the life once there's canopy that's when the animals can start coming back um, there is no sign of canopy in most of the bushland um, and that's at least 10 years away well, I was going to say and that that takes years to come back yeah, 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 you know, yeah, and that's hoping no more fires in the meantime. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. You know, um, has the uh, I found that while this was happening in Australia in that tail end, that second last half of 2019, mm. and California was having a particularly bad season as well. Worth this enough. was actually finally becoming a, a massive story that people mm. were taking notice of. And then the pandemic happened. <laughs> yeah. Have you found in your own experience, has the pandemic, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not downplaying the pandemic, please don't take it that way, but have you found that it's taken attention away from some definitely. of the other major stories? Definitely, definitely. definitely. Um, you know, um, it was funny. I, I said to my brother when, when, the pen, when COVID hit, I said to him, so, you know, How's, how's it changed your life down here? And he's like, it's the same as after the bushfires. There's no one here except you can't get toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I laugh about that, but um, we have to, you know. Um, 
yeah, COVID has taken the um, has taken the shine, not the shine, but the attention away from um, what happened during the bushfires, and uh, that was one of my motivations for making the film, just mm. to keep it, just to keep it in in perspective, what what, what happened to us. Um, there are still projects going on for the bushfires, but yeah, definitely the um, people have got too much on their plate now to worry about what happened in the past. You know, people are just yeah. worried about getting their jobs and paying their bills. You know, I know. How, as a filmmaker, especially with with the film, with the subject, not only the subject matter being so important, but you having such a personal connection to the subject matter, how hard is, and you know, you mentioned earlier uh, in our chat that, you know, the film's getting some notice going to different film festivals and that, how difficult has it been for you not to be able to actually, you know, do the traditional festival route by going you know, traveling around the world a bit with the film and, and getting to speak to people face to face and getting people excited about advocating for, you know, against climate change and what people can do um, on the ground level. Um, I think um, one, one of the things I, I really was really careful about making this film was, as I said, I wasn't there on the day, or even though I was part of the community, I wasn't there on the day. So I didn't want to take the attention away from um, the people that were affected on that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do appear in the film uh, at, at the start and, I, you know, I guide the ship through, throughout the film. I, I actually didn't want to do that because I didn't want my own story, again, overshadowing everybody else's. A um, uh, producer mentor, friend of mine, James Knight, said, you've got to be in it because you are the, you will be, you know, the connection between the viewer and the story. Um, so I've tried, I, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm doing interviews like this with you and I've done plenty of radio and TV interviews about it. I think I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to put it into words. I, I'm just trying to be respectful to the, the people who were affected and not to be the face of the fires in Conjola. Right. I'm not, I'm not really comfortable with, with that. Right. Um, uh, a lot of people, other people may have been, but yes, personally, yeah, I'm just, yeah, it's not comfortable with it, I think. What's your hope for the, for the film and the impact it might be able to have then moving forward, not just from a festival run, but whether it's, uh, I mean, what are the release plans? Um, well, we're um, um, a company that's acting on my behalf at the moment. Um, we're talking with some local broadcasters, but we're aiming for streaming services. Okay. Um, we're, we're possibly going to re- remake it into a three-part series oh wow okay um, that's how we're going to try and sell it um beyond that um we'll, we'll just um do a pay-per-view ourselves i think um but my hope for the film is that we get things right in future we, we we try to get things right okay like in california like in australia bushfires are a natural part of our life right mm-hmm. we have bushfires but the point is they're getting worse they're getting worse so I'd, I'd like I'd like governments to just reassess first. Firstly, reassess how how we approach climate change. I would like um, people to understand what it's like to be in a bushfire. Mm. When you see this, see this film, you understand what it's like to be in a bushfire. What what decisions you make? You know, there's some weird decisions people make. More importantly, as well, what happens after a bushfire or a disaster like this? You know, like what do we expect of our emergency services or our recovery services? to look after us after the fire. And that was really lacking after this fire. Um, so yeah, just I want people to realize what it's like to be in it and, and how we can change what happens after it. I, and I think, I mean, you might've just answered this, but that was kind of my, my wrap up question really is, is for anybody who watches this film, whether it's, you know, this week during this festival or when it's on a streaming service or, or, or out really widely, uh, uh, into the public, uh, what do you hope people take from the film personally? Um, uh, well, obviously, the, the answer to that is the power of art and the importance mm-hmm. of art and um, how, how priceless art and artists are in our community. And I think, again, governments should respect that and um, put it on the, on the pedestal that it should be. Beautiful way to wrap things up. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it, it's true. It's, it's a truly 
stunning, harrowing, uh, mm. beautiful in many senses, uh, the, the sense of the community. Every, it, it all really comes through so mm. powerfully. Um, it's, it's a tremendous uh, film. I hope a lot of people get to see it I, around the world. I hope a lot of people get to see it. It's a wonderful work of art. Thank you, sir, Thanks, for joining Mike. me. Thank you. All the best. Thanks, mate. Cheers.